Hi everyone, my name is Lynn Powell and I'm a grief counselor with the Hospice Health Grief Counseling Center. Welcome to our 23rd annual Remembering Our Mothers event. Uh, this is the first year that we're doing it online. Uh, so I look forward to the time when we can all meet in person again. This event started as a result of Hope Edelman's book, Motherless Daughters, which she wrote uh, about her experience losing her mother at the age of 17. Um, and this prompted, you know, the growth of these gatherings of women as a chance for women who've lost their mothers at any age to come together and share stories and remember and reflect and kind of celebrate who these women are and uh, who we are as a result of them. Uh, this year's speaker is Janine Nisbet, and I want to welcome her and thank her for doing that for us this year. She has served as a bereavement counselor for over 25 years. She joined the staff of Owen Funeral Home in 1996. And preceding that, she served as a chaplain and a bereavement counselor for Hospice of Hope, which is located in Maysville, Kentucky. Janine holds a BS in educational psychology from U of L and a Master's of Divinity in pastoral care and counseling from the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. She's ordained as a minister and as a licensed Kentucky pastoral counselor. She's also certified in thanatology through the Association of Death Education and Counseling and is approved as an ACPE psychotherapist member with the Association for Clinical Pastoral Education. Janine, thank you. And we look forward to hearing you share your story. pleased to join you in this virtual gathering, remembering our mothers. 33 years ago, you couldn't have convinced me that I would ever be happy again. I was 21, sitting in my living room. My mother had died from a three and a half year battle with breast cancer. A song kept playing in my head, ain't no sunshine when she's gone. This captured exactly how I felt. My mother was my world. She was a rock. She was a constant loving presence in my life. She was still in the midst of preparing me for life. I felt utterly alone without her. Susan Wiggs is quoted, there's something about losing a mother that is permanent and inexpressible, a wound that never quite heals. We are different who lose our mothers. Those of you who are viewing have all lost mothers. Some lost mothers earlier than me. Others lost mothers in the busy years of life while working and raising families. And others became caregivers to moms who had been their caregivers. No matter the timing, the loss of a mother is life altering. Whether your relationship with your mother was good, bad, or somewhere in between, a mother leaves her imprint. When my mother died, I was still trying to figure out who I was. We had the natural battles as I was trying to self-differentiate. I can still hear her voice when I was sneaking in after curfew. Our relationship was not always easy. While she was fighting a terrible disease, I was trying to live my life. I didn't understand what forever meant. I couldn't conceive the full implications of what was to come. My mother seemed too big to die. While some may feel relief after caring for a mother who is suffering, I felt conflicted. My mother didn't make peace with her death. She fought taking her medications for fear she'd slip away if she went to sleep. She once took a 12-hour sit-in on the couch, refusing to go back to bed even though her abdomen was swelling. My mother was a strong force to deal with. She was stubborn, she was strong-willed, and afraid of dying. Now that I'm almost 10 years older than she was, when she died, I understand how young she really was and what she was having to say goodbye to. As I mourned and grieved her loss, I struggled with many feelings. 
I felt guilty for not being a better caregiver. I felt angry at cancer. I felt sad she'd never know my husband if I married, and if I had children, they'd never know her. I felt disoriented and confused. I didn't know how to do life without a mom. I struggled with how I would carry her memory forward into the future. I tried to keep holiday traditions, like playing Frank Sinatra as I decorated my Christmas tree. My mom would always mimic him singing as we decorated the tree. I became the person in the family who brought mom's orange salad to family gatherings. I even picked out a pair of glasses that were red and black because she loved U of L basketball. She really loved U of L basketball. It was a source of great tension tension in our family because my father was an avid UK fan. They couldn't watch the same TV when the teams played each other. As the years went on, I began to reconcile my life to my mom's death, but I realized that I was different because of it. Lisa Baker is quoted saying, losing a mother doesn't happen in a moment. It takes years to appreciate the impact of what is gone. It's taken many years for me to understand my loss and how my mother's life and death have shaped who I am today. My mother loved the simplicity of life. She liked playing board games, cards, and especially a game called Boggle. She knew how to find the fun in small things. She liked shopping, but she didn't buy much. However, if you went shopping with her, you had to be prepared. She made shopping day a three-course meal, eating breakfast out, lunch, and then dinner. My mom's life taught me it wasn't material things that would make me happy. She valued relationships and spending time with the people she loved and cared about. At the end of my mother's life, my family took shifts staying with my mom. I was the night shift, and then I would go to work during the day. The day she died, I was getting ready to leave work, and the phone rang. And instead of leaving, I took the call. When I got home, she had passed. I regretted taking that call for years. I questioned why hadn't I requested off from work? I felt so bad that I was not with her when she died. But as time went on, I let this regret teach me. It's a lesson I remember that helps me prioritize my life decisions. Relationships come first. I have a tendency to work too much. Remembering that day and the phone call I took has helped me drop what I'm doing and leave work on time and go home to my family. It's taught me to make the most of the moments with my family. I remember mornings when it snowed, when my kids were little. The kids and I would throw on snow clothes over our pajamas and go out and play in the snow because I was afraid it might melt before I got home from work. It taught me to drop everything when my daughter called me from college. She was at Bowling Green and she said, hey mom, leave work early, drive to Bowling Green and let's go to Mardi Gras in New Orleans for the weekend. I did. The good and the bad lessons we learn from our mothers can make us better people. My mom taught me hospitality. When you entered our home, my mom would ask if you were hungry and wanted to stay and eat, even if she had to cut the pieces of meat into half so there'd be enough. This was usually meant me and my siblings had to cut our portions. Mom, people came to her when their life was hard. Our home had a revolving door for company. She'd always say, don't look at my house, just come on in. She made people feel comfortable. She also loved talking on the phone. She was known for her telephone cords. This was before cell phones, of course. She had a cord so long that she could answer the phone in the kitchen and walk to every room in the house. She was always available to people. I learned from my mother how to sit with others in the good and the bad times of their lives. She was a non-judgmental presence. She would sit and listen and then eventually have them laughing and then invite them to play a game of cards. Raising my children, we often shared dinners with kids in the neighborhood. Sometimes we had the couch surfers and kids who just needed a place to stay while they were working out issues in their life. In those times when the kids were staying for dinner or sleeping over for a week at a time sometimes, I was reminded of my mother and what she taught me about hospitality and seeing to the needs of others. My mother's life and early death taught me to be in the moment, 
life is fragile. I learned to work hard, but also play hard. Through my school years, I tried to balance work, life, play in order not to miss out on the present. As I began my career and, and my family, I worked hard at my career, but I always knew I had to put, put it away and be available to my family. It's not always keeping this balance, but my mother's early death was always there to remind me to keep it in check. At 46, I was diagnosed with cancer, and I thought, oh no, here we go. My cancer was a late stage. My doctor told me to live each day as if it were your last. Now I remember looking at my husband and saying, geez, I must be dying. You only say that to people who are dying. Uh, I feared leaving my children around the same age my mother died. I didn't want to leave them with, without someone to help guide them and support them in life. I assessed my life, had I lived it well, and as I did this, I became grateful for how the early lessons I'd learned from my mom left me with little regret. I had lived in the shadow of her death for years, but had found ways to transform this loss into something that made me a better person, mom, and wife. Fortunately, I'm cancer-free. I rang the 10-year bell in March. Mother Teresa is quoted saying, not all of us can do great things but we can do small things with great love. My mother's life didn't change the world, but she changed my world. She did small things with great love. And as I look to a future, I hope to continue to carry my mother's legacy forward. For if I do, she'll never be forgotten. Thank you so much, Janine. That was beautiful. And I appreciate you sharing your mother with us today. Uh, in closing, I wanted to read this passage from the book that started it all, Hope Edelman's Motherless Daughters. And I want you all to reflect on what it means to you. In the redwood ecosystem, buds for future trees are contained in pods called burls, which are tough brown knobs that cling to the bark of the mother tree. When the mother tree is logged, blown over, or destroyed by fire, when, in other words, she dies, the trauma stimulates the burl's growth hormones. The seeds release and trees spread around her, creating a circle of daughters. The daughter trees grow by absorbing the sunlight their mother seeds to them when she dies and they get the moisture and nutrients they need from their mother's root system, which remains intact underground, even after her leaves die. Although the daughters exist independently of their mother above ground, they continue to draw sustenance from her underneath. Our lives are shaped as much by those who leave us as they are by those who stay. So all of us continue to gain sustenance from the people our mothers were, and they will continue to live in our lives as long as we remember them. Thank you so much for being here today. And again, I look forward to seeing you next year in person. Thank you. <laughs>